Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Friesan. With us for our program today, Assemblyman Mike Norris. Mike Norris represents the 144th Assembly District in New York State. That's an assembly district that includes the counties of Erie, Niagara, and Orleans. And we want to thank you folks all across western New York for tuning in. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Mike Norris, nice to see you. Thank you for having me today, Mike. Appreciate we're, it. We're going to get right down to brass tacks today, and that's the ongoing budget talks here in Albany. Progression is being made at a pretty good pace, pretty good clip. The governor started things off at the beginning of this session by giving his budget proposal to the legislature. Since then, the legislature has held its hearings, bringing in the governor's commissioners and, and uh, all his representatives to talk about what the governor's thoughts are and uh, representing his budget proposal that he laid out. Now, the Assembly and the Senate have each passed their own versions of a budget so really what we've got now on the table in front of us is the governor's pr budget proposal, the assembly's budget proposal, and the Senate's own budget proposal. And this is where the real horse trading really gets going, right? It does. And uh, as we move towards the March 31st deadline uh, for the budget, uh, these f uh, four gentlemen in a room will gather together and they will try to hash out the final details. Now, I am very much opposed to this four men in the room, the governor, the speaker, Senate Majority Leader, and IDC, IDC uh, Senator uh, in charge of the caucus will gather and do this. I think there should be an open and transparent uh, process so all the legislators will have an opportunity to say their piece for the people in their particular districts. Unfortunately, I don't see the process changing this year, so what we need to do is to stand up and to uh, fight uh, within our caucuses and within our delegations to promote things that are important to us. Overall, I'll just say the proposed budget of the governor is $168.2 billion. Last week, the assembly majority uh, put forth a budget of over $170 billion with more taxes and fees. You know, when I'm traveling throughout the district, it's very clear to me, people are fed up with their property taxes being high and overall taxes in New York being high. We rank 50th in overall taxation throughout all of the states, and not in the good way either. I mean, the worst taxation in the nation. And I'm a very strong proponent of reining in the spending uh, in Albany. We cannot continue to spend uh, like we're doing. We must cut where we can, and we must prioritize also where we can. Now, when I speak with folks back in the district, the roads are in awful condition. You know, we need infrastructure improvements. We need our roads protected. We need our water and sewer lines protected, our bridges. And uh, that's the area of the government, I strongly believe, that is our role. We must provide strong infrastructure so people can get to work and they can move about their business. Uh, the other thing I think is very, very important is prioritizing the education system and making sure that we're investing in the education of our children so those uh, children will one day uh, be in, in our communities working, having good paying jobs, and investing in our future. I think a strong education system is also very important. But on the flip side, we spend uh, $72 billion in Medicaid spending. Now, I think most folks understand we are certainly willing to help out those who have a tough period of time, who may need of assistance. Uh, we're all uh, good Americans, good New Yorkers like that. But this, trans this long trap where individuals are on Medicaid for decades upon decades, these things need to be reformed. We need to make sure we put uh, in, into effect um, efficiencies within the system to uh, rid out fraud and also to make sure we provide you know, work programs uh, for individuals in vocation areas. I think that's a very, very important part as well to making sure we are uh, job training properly, we're providing avenues of service uh, for individuals to go and get a good paying job and get back on their feet. So overall, I think spending, and most New Yorkers would agree, is completely out of control. But at the same time, the priorities for Western New York, our roads, our, edu our education system, and making sure uh, that we uh, bring real reform to the Medicaid system is very, very important. It was a little surprising that the Assembly <clears throat> came up with a, a budget proposal that was more than the governor's. <clears throat> because when the governor came up with his budget proposal, he already said it was several billion dollars a deficit, that there was a deficit built into it that was going to have to be figured out. So I almost kind of figured that, well, that maybe there would be uh, some cuts made and 
some hard decisions to try to bring things in less than what the governor's proposal even was, but I guess that's not how things always work. No, and uh, th now they all agreed uh, that there was actually going to be some additional revenue uh, in the system of uh, $700 million. When everything got uh, said and done with the end of the year and the, and the estimated tax payments coming in, they were able to uh, find more revenue within the system. But that doesn't mean that we should go out and spend that revenue. We should be taking that money and paying down our debt. We have a $64 billion debt right now. The proposed governor's budget, the proposed uh, assembly budget does not include any payments to pay down the debt. Um, and the other thing is, is in terms of finding the revenue sources, the governor as well as the assembly majority put in a, um, a, a few taxes in there as well. So there's an opium surcharge tax, the Amazon a tax now for the entire marketplace. There are some things for services that are exempt from sales tax if you're in New York. Now that would be taxed under that plan. There's also in the assembly Democrat majority plan, a $1 surcharge on Uber for everyone who would use an Uber. Again, this is ridiculous. We fought so hard to bring ride-sharing services to Western New York, and now they want to turn around and tax it. Tax everything. And I think it's my responsibility as a legislator, particularly from Western New York, to say enough is enough. We need to stop the taxes, we need, and we need to uh, reduce spending where possible. You mentioned uh, <coughs> the Medicaid spending, and it was interesting to hear what you said. And Medicaid it takes up $72 billion of the state's, well, what are the, well, about $160, $870 billion budget. I mean, that's a lot, that's a huge chunk. That's a very big chunk of that budget. And while it has long been said that New York State has the Cadillac of Medicaid programs, taking every, practically every, uh, program within the Medicaid system that is offered and giving it out as a possibility to the people of the state who need it, the people who are calling for a tightened spending, for, for an awareness of, of that there, there are problems in the system, they're not talking about doing away with any of those programs within the Medicaid system, they're just talking about accountability, right? They're just talking about eliminating the fraud and the waste and such, and they think that, that you could have a really big difference in that number. We do, and Leader Kolb, uh, the Republican leader of the New York State Assembly, and, and my fellow colleagues brought propo a proposal forward to actually have a state takeover of the property tax share of the Medicaid costs on counties because property taxes are so high in New York State. We understand that as a burden on our seniors and our hardworking uh, folks back in the district. So we put forth a plan which in over a 10 year period would save $6 billion. Mm -hmm. And within that plan, we find that there would be up to $1 billion a year just in the savings for efficiencies and ridding out the fraud. There would be no cut in services under that plan, but we would examine the programs within and do some consolidations of the, of the program, and there would be a cost savings there as well. So I think it's important to point out that we are working on bringing forth solutions to solving the problems here in New York State, at least the Republican conferences. I'm very proud to be a part of that conference to bring about the, the solutions for discussions, and oftentimes, like in the past, whether it be in, in, um, uh, in, in certain areas, when we bring forth an idea, for example, the Opium Task Force that we did several years ago, I was not a member then, but I've heard about it from, um, from Assemblyman Giglio, some of those things now have been put into effect within our budget, and we're very proud to be the uh, Conference of Ideas. And, that's, and the Medicaid program is not the only place people are looking to for uh, straightening out how things work around here at the state capitol. We just uh, came off the uh, much publicized Prococo trial, a member of the Cuomo administration who uh, was convicted on several counts of enriching his own uh, self through uh, receiving bribes and so forth. Uh, it, it puts a lot of spotlight on how the state puts out its contracts. To have that kind of flexibility to allow people to be in those situations 
is not a good thing. It's not, and what we need is full, open, and transparency in terms of letting out these contracts, <coughs> and, and to have a review of the economic development programs and the grants and the funding that we're putting forth to make sure we get the results as a result of the investments in those communities. Now, uh, I proposed last year, one of the first things that I did as a New York City Assemblyman was to introduce the State Contracts Sunlight Act. And what that would do is create a database of all the contracts and all the RFPs in New York State. And they would be um, placed into a database so uh, I can look it up, you can look it up, the folks at home can go look it up, and they can see exactly uh, what contracts are being let out, the dollars that are being spent to make sure we have an open and transparent government. The other thing about my bill is, is if we would have a 14-day public comment period, right now, if there is an agency that puts forth a contract under the Constitution and the laws, the state attorney general and the comptroller must review those contracts to make sure they're done uh, legally in a proper way. Well, during that period of time and before the Attorney General and the Comptroller would actually approve it, my proposal would be let's have a 14-day public comment period where indiv an, in an individual could comment uh, on whether or not there may be some problems with this contract or there may be uh, systems that are, uh, are in jeopardy. So I think that's a very good thing of promoting open and transparent government. We would have the database so everyone can see what contracts are being let out. We'd also have a public comment period to alert the Attorney General or the Comptroller of any problems that you or I or anyone else at home would see. One other thing to talk about today is the, uh, the, the discussions here in Albany uh, in reaction to that horrible shooting down in Florida at the Florida school and uh, you know all m legislators worried about what might happen if it or that sort of thing might happen at a school in their own district how do you help how do you try to prevent those sorts of things from happening at New York schools well another thing that the Republican conference has gotten behind with uh, leader Kolb and Assemblyman uh, Giulio was to create have a temporary commission mm -hmm. set up of professionals, law enforcement uh, personnel, of the school superintendents, and have a temporary commission put forth to examine school safety, to make sure that all of our schools are protected in New York State. You know, right now, unfortunately, they are soft targets, you know, like malls and movie theaters. I just feel it should become more of a hard target. Like when you go to the courts right now in New York State, unfortunately you need to go through a security system to get in, but it's for the protection of not just the judge and the attorneys, but for everyone who's in the courtroom. I believe, unfortunately, in the times that we're in, we need to study whether or not we should make our schools more of a hard target to, pro to protect them and to protect our children. And that's something the Temporary Commission would be looking at. We've ask the governor to do that, and it's something that I would be supportive to protect our children. I think that's going to be an ongoing discussion here in our final minute. You've got some upcoming local activities uh, on the docket. Tell us about those. Yes, you know, with the boating season coming up very fast, uh, we do have a boater safety course scheduled for Saturday, May 19th at the Barker Volunteer Fire Company uh, from 10 to 5 p.m. If you would like to uh, sign up for that course, you can contact my office at 839-4690. Another thing that we're partnering with the Niagara County Sheriff on this year is to do a car uh, safety check for seniors or anyone else who would like to have their car checked. What that would do is it would, uh, they would check the height of your seats, your mirrors to make sure they're proper, they check your, your tires. I think it's a very great program. I appreciate the Niagara County Sheriff doing that. We have two dates set up for that. One is on April 28th at the Lockport Town Hall starting at 9 a.m. And the other one is starting at 9 a.m. on June 16th at the Ockett Fire Company. If you need any more information on that, you can contact my office at 839-4690. And one final thing, Mike, we did do the winter coat drive last year. We had over a, a couple of thousand coats and gloves and mittens that worked out very well. But when we were also uh, talking with the shelters and the community organizations, they told us about a need for personal hygiene items like soap and shampoo, deodorant, uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste. So we are, I'm very proud to say I'm sponsoring my first personal care drive that's starting right now through May 1st. And you can drop off the items at the Lockport Town or City Hall as well as Newfane Town Hall or my district office in Clarence. Thank you, Mike. Michael Norris, thanks for joining us. We're out of time. See you folks for our next Assembly Calendar.